Hello everyone. I wanted to bring in the 1.4 discussion bulletins again and I wanted to work problem 3 here uh, for a number of reasons. One is is that these these consecutive integer problems are fundamental to getting the idea of variable representation down. If you can do that, if you can make the assignments here, you have a better chance of being able to do the ones in the more difficult word problems. So number 3 here asks us how would you represent three consecutive odd integers if z is the biggest one? How would you do this if the middle one was called z instead? So I want to work that problem and I also want to challenge you with a more um, interesting version of it that will stretch your brain. First off though, before we go there, we need to take a look at the definition of an integer. And I think one of my favorite gifts captures that rather nicely. As you can imagine here, the negative 3 goes on to the screen, off the screen to the left as negative 4, negative 5, and so on. And so too to the right here with 4, 5, 6, dot, dot, dot. So the integers are all the smooth whole numbers and their negative versions and including 0. Now, let's bring in a copy of the problem here and reread it and work on solving it. Okay, so how would you represent three consecutive odd integers if z is the biggest one? I know a lot of you have read and done these problems, and my suggestion here is that if you ever get stuck, you do an experiment with numbers. In other words, here are three slots that I am going to fill with three consecutive odd integers, and I'm not going to pick nasty ones. I'll pick three very nice ones, three, five, and seven. And You'd ask yourself, well, if you're here, how do you get here? And the answer is you add 2. And if you're here, how do you get there? And the answer is you add 2. And so to go from one odd integer to another, you add 2. If you began here, though, to get to this position, you'd subtract 2. Similarly, from 5, you'd subtract 2 to get there. So we have a, that very situation here. We have three consecutive odd integers, and the biggest one, is z. So to generate the preceding one, I need to subtract 2 from z. And let me do that. Now, to get to the preceding one to that one, you need su to subtract 2 from z minus 2. z minus 2 minus 2 is z minus 4. And so what you're looking at right here are three consecutive integers, three consecutive odd integers, or really three consecutive in even integers, in which the largest one is z. How would you do this if the middle one was z instead? I think we're on easy street now. We know the rule. We know the middle one is z. To generate the next larger one, we simply add 2 to z. To generate the preceding one, we subtract 2 from z. So this is the representation of three consecutive odd numbers in which the middle one is z. All right. so. That's fairly straightforward. I think most of you have got it and got it good. And here's the challenge. There are a bunch of books out there that do what's called um, math and magic. And most of these tricks are pretty lame and this is no exception. But the idea here is that what happens is um, you have the, uh, the magician asks somebody to hand somebody a calendar and says, go through the calendar and I want you to pick out a block of three by three dates and I want you to tell me what that middle date is and so all I need to know the mag magician says is that middle number and so suppose that you went and you picked out October 2009 and suppose you picked out this particular block here of uh, three by three from the calendar of course I've chosen this one because it's the um, midterm week is in October, but let's pretend it's random, and you would tell the magician the magician wouldn't see the block of three by three that you picked out. He, you would simply give him the number 15, and he would immediately tell you that the sum of those nine digits, those nine integers, is 135. Now, let me show you that that is indeed the case. Here's Wolfram Alfram with the nine integers. And they do, in fact, sum to 135. So how is this done? 
and that's that's the challenge I have for you and I'm going to give you some hints here in terms of variable representation what I want you to do is I want you to call the middle one the the number that you do give the magician I want you to call that X and I want you to represent the other eight integers by referencing X for instance in any calendar the next date is one more than this one. It is a consecutive integer and so this is going to be 8 plus 1, x plus 1. And I'll let you figure out how you're going to represent this one and the other six. But the idea is you're going to represent all nine with an expre with nine, expre nine expressions all using x. And then you're going to take the sum of those nine expressions and you're going to do some algebra on them. And you're going to generate a formula that the magician uses when he is given just this middle term. And so the proof of concept is here's the calendar here for December. And again, I pretend it's random, but as you can see, December 17th is actually the last day of our class. It's day four of the final. And that would be the digit if I gave you the mathematician, the date 17, I want to know what you do to that proof of concept. What do, you, what do you do to that? What operation do you do to, do to that that gives me the sum of all these nine integers? Okay, I hope you have fun with that. It will uh, definitely show your abilities to represent these variables. Good luck, and I hope to post a video solution to this problem. I'll be talking to you soon.